All right, section 2.3, pre-calculus honors, polynomial and synthetic division. Here's the deal. All we want to do is be able to find, nice spelling there, and find the zeros of some pretty tough-looking polynomials with higher degrees. But to be able to find zeros of some pretty big, powerful polynomials, we have to learn a couple things first. One is we've got to work with dividing polynomials, and we've got to work with imaginary numbers. So let's talk about dividing polynomials first. Think about just basic numbers and writing the factors of basic numbers. For example, 8 is 4 times 2, but then it can be further broken down. The 4 can be broken down to 2 times 2 times 2 and so forth. 9 would be 2 times 2 times 2 plus the remainder of 1. 23 is 7 times 3 plus the remainder of 2. 45 is nice and perfect. I can do 3 times 3 times 5. Um, 134 would be 2 times 67. So division is used if you know one factor and you're looking for others as a possible remainder. So usually when we start these problems is we know what one of the factors are. We're just trying to see if we can find more. Um, remember back to elementary school, and we talked a little bit about this in class the other day. For example, why is 4 a factor of 8? And that's simply because 4 times 2 is 8, meaning 4 goes evenly into 8 with a remainder of 0. 4 is not a factor of 9 because you need a remainder when you're dealing with 4 and 9. Obviously, 4 times 2 makes the 8, but you need that extra plus 1 to make the 9. So polynomials work the same way. They can be rewritten as a product of two or more polynomials with the possible addition of a remainder. For example, an easy polynomial x squared minus x minus 20, we could factor into x minus 5, x plus 4. That is very easy, no remainder. If we would FOIL this uh, right here, it would exactly make, well, that's a nice little circle I got going on here. It would make it exactly x squared minus x minus 20 perfectly. However, polynomial like 2x squared plus 7x minus 8, right here, it can't be factored perfectly. And in fact, I did this one, and this is something that hopefully we'll be able to figure out how to do on our own here. Um, but it could be factored into 2x minus 3 times x plus 5, and then there's this extra plus 7 remainder on the end there. So um, we've got to worry about polynomials like that as well. So let's check out a long division. I know you guys have done long division. Don't tell me you haven't. So here's what we do. You put the uh, what you're dividing by goes on the outside. So there's my x minus 2. Make your long division bar like we're in elementary school here. We got 6x cubed minus 19x squared plus 16x minus 4. And the first step is we got to figure out how can I turn this first value right here, this x, how can I turn that into a 6x cubed? Well, I need a 6 and I need an x squared. So notice I'm putting that above the x squared. I'm putting that in the x squared column because x times 6x squared makes 6x cubed. Well, what about the negative 2? Well, negative 2 times 6 makes negative 12x squared. So everything kind of fits nice, and we'll just continue on. Now, with long division, the next step is to subtract the columns. I'm going to circle that subtraction sign. I'm going to put a little star by it right here, because everybody always forgets to do the subtraction. 6 minus 6 is 0. That's exactly what we wanted to happen there. Negative 19 minus negative 12 is actually going to make a negative 7x squared, because the negative 19 minus negative 12 is going to make that a positive 12. And then we drop down the 16x and the minus 4. We start the whole process over again. How do I turn an x into a negative 7x squared? Well, I need a negative 7x. So x times negative 7x is negative 7x squared. Uh, negative 2 times negative 7x is negative 14x. And I'm on my way. Once again, subtract. Negative 7 minus a negative 7 makes 0. 16 minus a negative 14. 16 minus a negative 14 is actually going to make a 2x, right? 2x. Oh, no, did I make a mistake here? Yes, I did make a mistake. Look at this. Negative 2 times negative 7x should have been a positive 14x. I thought something weird was going on there. 16 minus 14x is a 2x. Drop down the minus 4. One more to go. How do I turn an x into a 2x? I need a positive 2. 2 times x makes 2x. And the negative 2 times positive 2 makes a negative 4. Do one more subtraction here, and I get 2x two mi two minus 2x is 0. Negative 4 minus negative 4 is 0. And I end up with this last value here is what we call the remainder. So having a remainder of 0, like we talked about, is really, really good. That means that my original function, the original function I was given, this big long one right here, 6x cubed minus 19x squared plus 16x minus 4, could be written as the factors of x minus 2, that was the original factor I was given, 
times what my quotient was, 6x squared minus 7x plus 2. Now, I would have to attach on a plus a remainder here, but since my remainder is 0, don't have to worry about any kind of addition out here. So I know that the factor given, x minus 2, times this new quotient that I just found multiplied together would give me that original problem that we started with. Let's do another one here as well. So again, the what I'm dividing by goes on the outside here, x plus 1. And then I draw my division bar there. I got x squared plus 3x plus 5. And I say, how do I turn an x into an x squared? I need an x. That's easy. x times x is x squared. 1 times x is 1x. And again, I'm going to subtract. So x squared minus x squared is 0. 3x minus 1x is 2x plus 5. And now i got to start all over. So how do I make an x into a 2x? Well, with a 2. This is a nice, easy one. So x times 2 is 2x. The 1 times the 2 makes a 2. And then I do my subtraction. So 2 minus 2 is 0. 5 minus 2 is 3. This time I have a remainder. It is impossible to turn an x into a 3. I cannot go down a degree. I can only go up. So that means I do have a remainder, which means my original problem right here, x squared plus 3x plus 5, I'll call that the original function, is equal to what I got to start with, x plus 1, that original factor, times my quotient that I got all the way up there at the top, x plus 2, and I'm going to add on that extra remainder. So that is how you would do a problem like that. So basically what we get here is that... Um, the original, this is why, you know, the key thing I want you to focus on right here, the original function is equal to the divisor, which is your original factor that you're given, times the quotient, plus any remainder. And we're hoping, we're praying, we're just really, really hoping here that the remainder is zero. We'd rather not have a remainder at all. So that's kind of how I want you to write the problem. The divisor times the quotient plus the remainder is equal to the original problem, and that's the original dividend, we call that. So, okay, in order to avoid any mistakes and possible errors before you attempt log division, make sure, one, that the original function, the dividend, the big one, must be written in order with descending powers. You've got to keep everything in order. Also make sure that if any of the values are missing, any of the powers are missing, you insert placeholders of zeros for those variables. Okay, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in the next example. So make sure you follow these rules. That's what, uh, I think that's Lil Wayne, I'm not sure, but pretty sure that's what he says because he likes to say, okay. All right, here we go with this first one here. x cubed minus 1 is the dividend. So if you notice, I skipped x squared and I skipped x. So the factor goes on the bottom, x minus 1, the divisor. And in here, I need an x cubed, and then I need to put a 0x squared. I've got to put a placeholder there. I also need a 0x, and then I could put the minus 1. So I like to count down. 3, 2, 1, none. No x's. And you've got to have those holders there. So how do I turn an x into an x cubed? I need an x squared. See, now it's going to go in that column. x times x squared is x cubed. Negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. And I'm going to do my subtraction. 1 minus 1, or x cubed minus x cubed is 0. Be careful here. 0 minus negative 1 x squared actually makes a positive x squared, because the two negatives would make a positive. I got my 0x. I got my minus 1. How do I turn an x into an x squared? With an x. x times x is x squared. Negative 1 times x is negative x. And I do the whole thing again x squared minus x squared is 0. 0 minus x squared is actually going to make a positive x. And then drop down the minus 1. And how do I make an x into an x? I just need a 1. x times 1 is x. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And look at that remainder of 0. Beautiful, beautiful. So my original function right here, my dividend, we call it, is equal to, you can call that the function, whatever, is equal to the original factor or... Um, Divisor, you were given x minus 1 times my quotient, x squared plus x plus 1 plus any remainder, which I don't have any, so I'm just going to leave it right like that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's try another one here. This one's a little bit more confusing, but believe it or not, the harder this one looks, the actual easier it is. So we got my what I'm dividing by, my uh, factor and my divisor goes on the outside. Inside is going to go 2x to the fourth. I do have a 4x cubed. I do have a minus 5x squared and a plus 3x minus 2. So I got a 4, 3, a 2, a 1, and then a no x's. That's good. 
You don't have to put any placeholders. So I'll go through this real quick. x squared into a 2x to the fourth. I need a 2x squared. That's going to make 2x to the fourth. 2x times 2x squared makes a 4x cubed. Negative 3 times 2x squared makes negative 6x squared. And I'm going to subtract. 2 minus 2 makes 0. 4 minus 4 makes 0. Negative 5 minus negative 6 makes a positive x squared plus 3x minus 2. How do I make an x squared into an x squared? I need a plus 1. Notice I'm putting that all the way down here in the 1 column, or the single digit column, I guess. So um, let's see here. x squared times 1 is x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. I'm going to subtract. 1 minus 1 makes a 0 there. 3 minus 2 makes a 1x. You don't really need that 1 there. Negative 2 minus negative 3. Be careful that 3 is going to turn into a positive 3. So that's a plus 1. So let's see, my original problem was this big ugly function right there. So that original function right there is equal to my factor or the um, divisor I was given, x squared plus 2x minus 3 times my quotient, 2x squared plus 1 plus any remainder, and that is an x plus 1 remainder right there as well. And again, why did I stop there? Because there's impossible to turn an x squared into an x. I can't go any further. I can't go backwards. All right, so um, next we're going to talk about synthetic division. Synthetic division is so easy and so fun and so beneficial. Um, so much easier than long division. The only restriction, though, when you're working with polynomials, the, val the polynomial that you're dividing by, the divisor, the bottom, has to be linear, which means it has to have a degree of 1. So, for example, it could be something like x minus 5, degree of 1, 3x minus 7, degree of 1. You can't have any, like, x squareds or x cubes on the bottom there. The dividend must be written with all coefficients with zero for missing powers. So the best way to learn this technique is with an example, I think. Um, however, I've got to remember the boobs. So that synthetic division is really easy once you get the hang of it. Swag. All right, here we go. So notice I'm dividing by x plus 3, which is linear, real nice and easy. So synthetic division uses this upside down kind of division looking bar. And then you need the, only the coefficients you need here. So there's the first one from the x to the fourth. There are no x cubed, so I've got to put a placeholder right there, 0. Then the negative 10, then my negative 2, and then my 4. So I got the 1x to the fourth, 0x cubed, negative 10x squared, minus 2x plus the 4. Now what number goes outside here? Well, it's the number that makes your linear factor 0. So if this is my factor x plus 3, what is the 0? Well, that would be negative 3. We've talked about that before. So we need a negative 3 right here. First thing you do is drop down that first number. Just drop it down 1. So negative 3, then you multiply. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Then you add the columns, add the columns. That's going to be a negative 3. Then you multiply. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Add the columns. Negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1. Multiply. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Add the columns. Negative 2 and 3 is a 1. Multiply. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Add the columns. 4 plus negative 3 is 1. That last number, circle it. It's really, really important. That is your remainder. That's that last number. So what's left with here? How do I interpret these crazy numbers? Well, think about it. I started off with a fourth degree. Using synthetic division, you drop one degree every time you do synthetic division. So I dropped from a fourth degree to a third degree. So this is a 1x to the third minus 3x squared minus 1x plus 1. So that's what these numbers right here tell me. Don't forget that last number. Always circle it. That's your remainder. So this is my quotient. So my original function, that function I started with at the very, very top, would be x plus 3. That was the original factor, times my quotient, x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 1 plus any remainder, which I had a remainder of 1. So let's check out this next problem here and try to do this one. This is a little uglier looking one. Once again, I'm going to make my upside down division bar 6, 7, negative 94, and 105. 
Again, this is the third degree, the second degree, the first degree, the no degree, and they did go in order, no placeholder. So here's the bottom. That's a factor. What is my zero of that factor? It would be x equals 3 halves. Think about that. Add the 3, divide by the 2. So that's the number that goes out in front here. Now, I know this looks really ugly, but it's going to work out real nice. Drop down the 6. 3 halves times 6 is going to be a 9. Add the columns. That's going to be a 16. 3 halves of 16 is a 24. Boy, I hope I'm right. And let's see. Add the columns. Negative 94 plus 24 is negative 70. I don't know if I'm right or not. We'll see here. 3 halves times negative 70, and you can use a calculator if you have to, is, I know I'm right here, and here's why I know I'm right, is negative 105. That adds up to zero, and that is the remainder, and I love remainders of zero. So, I started with a third degree. That means my quotient is now a second degree, 6x squared plus 16x minus 70. Multiply that by the original factor you were given, 2x minus 3, and you got your original function. So that original value right there is the combination of 2x minus 3 times 6x squared plus 16x minus 70. Um, so um, that's it for uh, polynomial. I Sorry, I jumped ahead there for a second. That's it for polynomial and synthetic division. There's a couple more things we're going to talk about in the next video as well, so please make sure you watch it.